Well, soloist here, we're back with Guild Wars 2 Heart of Thorns Beta Weekend 3. And this weekend we've got two characters, which I've already um, equipped and sorted out and gotten here into the explorable part of the world. And I've done an initial setup and a bit of testing with them. So first of all, we've got the Druid, which is the Hunter Elite spec, which is primarily healing based for a um, support of a large group, which will probably be necessary in some of the raids, although Guild Wars 2 has never had a specialized healing spec before. This is about as close to it as you get. Um, so we'll talk about this one and how it's been set up and pros and cons. Since my level, main level 80 is a hunter, a ranger, sorry, this is my uh, sort of native spec, so I know this one best. Um, the other one that's very interesting, more interesting than I thought it would be, is the Scrapper. We're going to introduce her as well. She's an engineer. And uh, I think this one is going to be up with the Thief's Daredevil Elite spec for me in terms of making Engineer a more interesting, um, successful kind of profession to have. It's more than a little bit weird to date in Guild Wars 2 and before Heart of Thorns, and I think this one is really a lot of fun to play and also lends itself more to solo work which uh, I think is going to be a distinct advantage for me. Anyway, um, let's take a peek here at what we've got. Of course, I have her all geared out in Berserker. Uh, that might not be the best thing going forward, but yeah. Um, one unfortunate thing that happened with this weekend is that they had some back um, server issues and so they had to clear or lose all of the characters we had built up over the last couple so I've lost my revenant and I'm not going to be rebuilding that until uh, live date. Um, we also unfortunately lost our glider <laughs> skill and I well, it's unlikely we're going to get that back before the end of the weekend since we're coming up on it now. Um, so I'm going to focus here, and this is the same map, by the way, um, just so you know. Um, similar map to what we had before um, for the weekend two. There is um, a little bit more, at least I didn't get to Blighted Depths before. Um, maybe I just did this time, or maybe it's new, but there's it's sort of a dead end. There's some very tantalizing stuff up here. Um, there's a bridge where you fight off some nasty Silvari and that bridge goes to what looks like a nasty Silvari town or uh, camp so but that's blocked off so that's uh, sort of interesting and down in this area as well um, so yeah we haven't got a much expanded map so it's pretty much the same thing that we ran through before there are uh, more levels above the canopy and down below on the map, and uh, if we have time we might get there. But uh, what I'd really like to look at here is actually the elite specs rather than the map, because we're going at the end of the month we'll have lots of time to run over the map. And I do find, although it is circuitous up and down, that this third weekend now I've pretty much gotten these little ramps and pathways pretty much absorbed, so it's not that hard to get from one place to another now and open up the map. Okay, so, um, of course she comes pre-trained with everything, so let's look at the spec. Here's the thing with the Druid. If you want DPS as well as healing, which is probably going to be the case in Guild Wars 2, unless really specialized situations develop where you want to have um, just a healer who doesn't do DPS. Usually you're going to want everyone to contribute to DPS. Um, based on my play with this, here's what I would suggest. Um, you're going to have to make a decision between whether you want to go ranged or medium to melee. Um, the real strength the ranger has in this game is that you can do both. You can switch weapons and go to you know, throwing axes and, and getting in close, or you can stick with your longbow and hit from afar. Um, 
Unfortunately, once you equip the healing staff for the elite spec, now you've got to make a choice. Are you going to be ranged or are you going to be mid to melee? Um, you have to make up your mind. Uh, or you are going to wind up to be equipping things in and out and on the fly and uh, you know between battles and that might be also involving you to switch some stats or um, switch some skills in and out. So that's perhaps not the greatest choice. So you really need to stick with whichever route you're going to go with your DPS weapon. The other thing that's worth noting here get that back up is the you are really going to be swapping weapons. If you're doing any DPS you're going to be swapping back and forth between the staff and whatever in this case she's got a long bow. Uh, because you need this for DPS and then this will give you healing and some other things. Um, yes, it does have some dps -y spells off the staff like Solar Beam. Um, that hits, in my experience testing it out yesterday with mobs, that hits a mob about as hard as a swat from a very small kitten. So on the other hand, if you really want to do something with that mob, um, chances are that you're going to want to your offensive weapon. So originally when I set her up here, I set her up with soloist kind of things and usually I stick with one weapon. I don't swap around a lot unless I have to. So I set her up with removing the various swap weapon does this kind of skills. But now that I realize um, how really awkward the you know, how much little DPS is going to be coming off of the healing spec, um, anything that you have a chance to gain um, either DPS or healing or some kind of boon or condition on a mob from switching weapons, I would set it up to do that because you are going to be switching weapons a lot. So that having been said, um, we have our staff. We did pick our Elite as being Ancient Seed. So if we strike a stunned, daze, knockdown, or otherwise launched foe, summons entangling roots. So as a as a soloist, that sounded pretty good. Um, you can have a cosmic wisp that heals everybody, that it goes through, circles around you, or you can do the celestial avatar thing and then it's basically reduced incoming damage. So this one is basically triggered on if you heal somebody you get something um, and the celestial avatar goes basically into super healing mode. and you can take conditions off yourself. I did not find that it did much help to my pet. Um, there's one ginormous big frog out here that just, <laughs> I mean ginormous, and he just one-shotted my pet flat, and since I only had one pet I had to stow it and bring it back out again. There was no way with my super healing powers that I could heal that pet or bring it back to life. So anyway, obviously it's a druid, not a shaman. So you know, I'm playing with these various things, but uh, I'm not sure that it's really doing me a lot of good as a soloist. So again, I it's, it's not as bad as I expected based on my expectations and what a lot of people were saying about how horrible this was going to be. Um, this spec has been the first one I guess that they announced and the last one they delivered and seemingly still isn't all that good. See? Oh wow, that solar beam really hit you for a lot, didn't it? Alright, so let's do some DPS. Oh gee, now we killed him. 
Okay, I think we made our point. <laughs> yeah. Killed him with like one, two shots with a real weapon, but, you know, otherwise it looked like we tickled him a little bit. Okay. So, I don't know if there's a great deal more to say about this one. basically gone through most of it. Um, I'm looking to see if we have any other spells that we... Okay, here's the entangle. Entangle roots thing too. But basically So shake it off, cure condition. Back in there, whatever, that's just pet stuff. So we have Ancestral Grace, we have Vine Surge. We have a Wisp attacking foes and it does seem to do Wispy damage. And we do have an Energy Barrier, but of course all three of these are not my, it's not my delight to have things that have to be targeted as much as having three things that I've got to actually double click to lay down, but, um, say la vie. And here's Celestial Avatar. So, it sits up here, and this consumes your force, so it's looking to me like a little bit like those of you who play WoW, um, this looks like Boomkin. The uh, the spellcaster mode, which has eclipses of sun and moon, and things go one way or the other way, and you want to harvest an extreme before it flips back in the other direction. So let's see if we can get this thing to do anything. Come on, bugs. This is giant beetle city. All right, go again. Staff only. Do I have any? All right, so here's Celestial Avatar mode, and I get new skills. Cosmic Ray. Am I healing you or hurting you? Who knows? Dazed. Oh, he's dazed. There we go. Let's see if this can hurt him when he's dazed. Oh, it's like pouring milk on him. Excuse me. One, two, three, auto attack. He's down. Cute. All right. Yeah, we don't have any more energy. So this thing sort of goes from F5 to a little more glowy ball, and you click it and get a new spell set, so it's a little bit like having a different stance. Oh, beetles, beetles, beetles. Alright, so let's take them a bit first. That's our tidal healing. Okay, so this should pulse triple and Ooh, big bang, but it looks like you gotta be pretty close, which is not how rangers usually work. Okay, so we're gonna solar beam somebody. Oh, I think we ran out of power. Oh, 
Oh, I don't like how those beetles slip over like that. That just makes me want to vomit. Okay, here we go. Bang, 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 you did. Okay. <laughs> yep. Do practice this one. You better be good at switching out weapons because, oh my god, there is not much DPS on this guy. But as a ranger, if I can live with just one weapon, I'm not so happy in losing the longbow because my choice is the, the axe, the throwing axe for sure. I do more medium to melee kind of ranger stuff. So, but it is nice to have that longbow when you really don't want to get close to the dudes. So, um, I will probably wind up having to do some re-equipping from bags. And of course, as we all know, that doesn't work when you need repairs. So you're going to be carrying repair kits, blah, 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 blah. So, um, anyway, I think we've uh, pretty much exhausted the real exciting bits of this. Oh, good. Looks like the minstrel has stopped playing. Maybe somebody shot him. Okay. Uh, he was playing when I came here a minute ago. Let's go and check out the scrapper. It's rather confusing here because they have the same... Since they both play the same armor, they look the same. Except for their little profession badge. They're both dressed up in Berserker. Including weapon, but not bothering with rings and jewelry and trinkets. Forget it. Not that we're playing them that much here on the weekend. About to lose them in a couple hours as it is, anyway. And the other thing is, until now... There really aren't that many people here this time, and until now, the um, performance yesterday was pretty poor, actually. Let's see, you, know, you need some repairs too. Interesting. You guys have been getting beaten up out here. Now, so this one. This one is fun. You're ready to face your fears. Come see me. Okay, so we got this ginormous hammer. And our scrapper build. Now, what I've chosen is we have our function gyro finish as a finisher, which is fine, as we don't have a lot of allies as a soloist. Okay, so heal induces damage, yeah, yeah. Um, function gyro, you and gain stability is sometimes good, but sometimes bad. Leap finisher or blast finisher and lightning field, super speed, eh. Uh, that sounds like too many things have to happen at once, but that's okay. We'll try that some other time. Successfully revive or finish, you gain boons to nearby allies. Well, can't do anything about that. That's the way it is. Um, rapidly regenerate health while affected by... Stunning or dazing a foe applies vulnerability and weakness. So you have DPS or health, gain power based on toughness so, or strength. So here's your choice. Nice choices, actually, this time. Duration of stuns increased and decreased coming in. That's good. Stacking toughness when struck, reducing combing condition. Good, good. Better armor, gyros and super speed, and lightning field, so that's the thing that triggers the other one back here. And hammer skills, deal increased damage, invading and attack grand stability. So since we have this ginormous big hammer, let's go look at the hammer skills. So this one is fun. The engineer has been, a lot of people have given it criticism for being a weird spec, and a little bit putty and rather down on DPS, more of a little pistol spitter type of thing. And I must admit, I haven't been leveling my engineer very much, other than that she's my chef, because of that. It's just such a quirky little thing. I'd rather use her as a crafter than get her out in the world, tossing little bombs that don't seem to do enough, and then you wind up just being killed off by something. 
Okay, she has not done this circuitous ugly trip over there. So maybe we'll try it and see what she doesn't get killed off. There are some serious bugs in the environment here. Um, there are some places where you do not want, like that one, to cross over uh, because what has actually happened is there's some spots where you're actually, the vine looks solid and should be solid, but actually is non-physical. Yeah, it's physical in one spot, and the next step you fall right through it and die. In one place there was an edge of the land near a vine where again you thought that the land was solid but surprise and uh, you get close to the edge but not on the edge it looked good to me there wasn't any lag effect I could see and yet too bad so sad and it's a very long way down still this one pathway bugs me for some reason I keep missing it. help us collect weapon parts so I can build a bomb Low. Yeah, yeah. Here's our ni nice little hollow tree bridge. This one I like. Why don't you find your way around here a few times? It starts to get second nature, which actually is better because now when you have to run 50,000 alts through these things, well, it seems like 50,000 is usually only five. Um, when you're running alts through now, it's not so boring. This time, though. It's not so boring because you, uh, the route is rather difficult, so, you know, by the time that it's really become second nature, you're probably on alt number three anyway, so <laughs> the boredom factor is relatively low. That's a nice part of the design. I do like these stairs along the edge of things. Not to mention less hopping on stairs. Yeah, yeah, I've been there. Oh no. Ah. It's turning into nighttime. Ah. Nighttime here is a bit of a treat. <laughs> Not. The reason we're mining is just trying to get that glider back if possible. Very unlikely, but it took me two weekends of casual play with everything else going on to uh, get the glider last time, and then to see it go away was like, no, no, but. That is how it was. Now let me see here. Now we get caught in a MOA stampede. Oh, no. Some of these routes still aren't totally second nature. I wind up somewhere I'm going before I even realize I'm there. Probably get glider just as I end the video or something. All right, always take the high road over here. Now, something weird happened earlier this evening when I went through that way. Now she has this point anyway. Vulnerable is really cool. You turn really, really tiny, and they can't see you. Neither can you, though, of course. <laughs> yeah, I don't know who thought that one out. When you turn invulnerable, you are, like, smaller than a mini. And the screen is rather busy, so to my eyes, I was having some difficulty. You can see it, but... 
it's really not the best. Okay, I've been running into the edges of things. Oh, 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 and as I say, I've been a little bit concerned about at one time I fell through something, so I'll try to stay away from some edges this time. But things are much more vertical, so you really need to work your way down to things to explore this map entirely. Oh, somebody got a big thing. There are some big things in this map. Don't kill them so fast. Did I do all that? No, someone else must have. That's a very strange... Oh, snap. Mushrooms? No, there's soggy mushrooms. No, can't do that. Don't have that spec yet. Don't have that mastery. Yeah, there's some strange effects to get... When you're getting, um... Entangled by some of these frogs, it's hard to tell if you're being entangled, you're stuck in a hole, or what on earth is going on. I find it difficult switching from pet specs. All right, all right. Switching from pet specs to non-pet specs, it gets a little lonely. <laughs> you keep wondering where your pet went. are your friend. Sometimes they're not. Some of these vines have nasty enemies on it. Oh! What was that? Long distance spit? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> these enemies up here are not nice. Oh, poison cloud. Ew. Just let it go. <laughs> Alright. Back to a waypoint. I think that in comparison with the Daredevil, the Daredevil is more fun because she has more evading skills. This one, Daddy, oh, it's a one-shotting run-through thing. Yep. These things have been showing up in the Silver Wastes as well. They're really quite gnarly when they go through you. I just fought one on my regular main in the Silver Waste. Not a very fun creature. And it seems to be after me. Alright. No. Hey, look at you. Oh, this, that is a very cute hop. If you time it right, Right. The zinga, the zinga. Bang. Very cute. It sort of hops around the mob and then usually lands on top. 
The problem is if your mob's moving is not really terribly useful. Let's try this one. One. Two. Oh, no, you're not close enough for two. You see that didn't work. You have to be a ways away. sure what's going on. I would say leg. That's why you need a druid when you run into those things. Alright. Yeah, her survivability could be a lot better. I mean, I know she's not wearing heavy plate or anything, but neither's the thief, and the thief just can get out of dodge faster. And that's number three bouncing around. I really do like, but it does seem like a lot of these elite skills to be tough to land it where you want it. I actually had it landing better, strangely enough, yesterday than I've got it going tonight. So let's see how our glider skills are coming. We may have to. Okay, now, um,. I don't think we're going to get there, but everyone else has moved on while we're still exploring the scenery. What are you stuck on? I mean, sometimes she just sticks. Alright, it looks like we're about to be invaded by a whole pile of crud running up the slope. Oh, come on guys, crud coming. See, now there's a risk. Bah. <laughs> oh, come on, it wasn't even that far down. Alright, so we've discovered another risk. Three definitely will bounce you off the edge. Some kind of bouncy things don't, and some type of bouncy skills do. This one clearly does. So, next lesson. Don't use number three on narrow paths. Oh, that was cute. Do it again. Oh, wait. You probably can't for a while. Oh, still got root, though. Not that anyone cared about the loot. Oh, oh, no. It seemed to be early warning here again. Yeah, this is the one where all the creatures are. The bat. Uh oh. Frog. <laughs> that is called dispatching a frog. That's probably the best I've had a character do in the beta yet. So she's squishy, but war when she hits right on. But you see, here's the problem. I can't... I can't 
can't do my number two up here, or number three up here, because I'll bounce right off. There, I <laughs> whacked a tree. Um, the problem there is not only is the mob moving, but by the time I triple bounced over to him, someone else had killed him. There are some difficulties. Football, football. All right, so let's see if we can set up. Alright, oh, oh, there's another ledge. I don't like that. Okay, maybe I'm far enough away to see you now. Oh, cute. Gotcha. In your face. Look at that. That, that berserker twisty thing is so handy. Oh, there he's not. It's just not nice. Nasty when they get you so fast you can't keyboard your way out. Come here. No, 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 no. That's it, that's it. Now I did tweak a few things. Oh, here's this new blighted depths. Doesn't seem to go anywhere other than being colossally painful to be in. It does go somewhere, on, but it's been blocked. Oh, it's oh not now. that thing. I don't like that thing. That thing also one-shots you. Stop it. Get away. Two of them? I don't think so. <laughs> Feel the beauty. Like somebody chewing on you. Yeah, yeah, right. I do not like those things. They are awful. So here's the bad Savari. There's some of the bad Savari. find one this time either. <laughs> yeah. Ah. yeah. Some of these mobs are mean. This is not a nice... Yeah, you see, there you go. How did they knock me right through a solid vine while I was trying to defend myself? There, there's some serious bugs in this world at the moment. So I am doing hope they fix those transparent vines and ledges and things by the time this thing comes live. Anything unconnected so it's not contested. Yeah, so this one needs some playing with. Given she's in full berserker gear, I mean maybe she needs more toughness armor, maybe she needs more vitality, um, maybe I need to play a bit more with the choices I made. Maybe my hammer doing more damage isn't as good as me stacking toughness when struck, which increases armor and reduces incoming condition. That's what I had when I was playing with her yesterday when I first set her up. She seemed to be stronger. Now here's the regen. But this is only regen when you're affected by swiftness. Stunning or dazing applies vulnerability might be useful. And power based on toughness might, while well, you have stability. So, well, this might play well because if you're going to get stacked toughness when struck and you gain power on your toughness, then this might actually be quite a nice little grouping. 
I think that's what I had yesterday. So it's it's a matter of playing with this to tune it. Yeah, gyro thing. Well, if heal temporarily reduces damage, then if I use elixir two and I wind up with uh, or whatever it is, and I wind up actually with, in, with a shield, then that's probably also what I had yesterday, so it's probably not that got too bad. Oh, the minstrel is back. Okay, so this is a nice little area for testing skills, I find, because just like we were at with the druid, this isn't really all that tough as that. Well. Alright, let's go whack a beat. Come on right into that one, Beetle. Yeah, this is better. Mind you, this Beetle is better. Yeah. Now you notice the Druid killed this off much faster in Ranger mode. Once she got her bow out, it was like two shots and these things were done. And so, although she's wielding this big hammer, she doesn't really seem to have the DPS that the ranger has. Which is sort of bizarre, because usually if you're a melee kind of player, you'd like to have some DPS. Um, really, really, this one's a little tougher. Nice, but I don't think that was two jumps. Three jumps, that was two jumps. That was strange. <laughs> the gyros are really bizarre. There's one. There's stealth that was cute. One gyro that follows them around. So okay, fine, good. It doesn't seem to do anything. It just floated around the air. So move that one off. This toolkit here changes your spell bar. I don't know if they're more useful. And they don't change for too long, but. Whatever I did there was much less effective. <laughs> All right. So this one, at this moment, I could really would like for more DPS. from my final walk. <laughs> a cool crackling thing, but I think it was dead lag-wise before I even hit it. That's the problem with that one. Use it not as a finisher, because otherwise your lag is basically going to kill it. Come back over here. Edge of the ledge, that's just not useful. Right? Okay, come here. Come here. Where did that go? You see, that does give him a good try. I think he's giving me a good try. I can't do my three. 
bouncing around thing, which really does have quite a powerful kicker at the end. Can't do it if you're hanging over on the edge. It's a good zone for testing out skills, though, because you don't get over mobbed and you can play with the individual bits. The problem is getting here. <laughs> as they say for me to know you to find out. If you actually had a glider, you could glide over to there very easy and get down to that massive iniquity down there. Anyway, where are we, where are we? So close. Um, if they, blow away the characters was one thing, but why could they not have at least, if they wound up blowing away our glider progress for one weekend, for testing, could they not have, like, given us a free glider level 1, not level 2? I wasn't asking for much. Just wouldn't it be nice? Last long enough. It's just like the um it's just like the gliders. Alright, veteran. You are pain. I get out of here for a while. I think I know I'd get out of here for a while. Something supposed to get rid of conditions on me? Yeah. Oh, don't go into another bug. Oh, he needs another one of these things. I think that was gonna work. still around? I think I might have actually killed him. Okay, the giant spotted one is probably... Yeah. He's back to health again. This guy's still doing his thing. Really? Signifying nothing, perhaps? That was a nice feel. I got that guy before I even had a chance to throw my elixir bomb. Dervish hammer skill that you stop the minute you move. Why can't you tune it and move deeper into the mob pile and still be whirling? You should be able to whirl as you move like that, but no. Seems the minute you move forward, it stops. So that one I would uh, tune up a little better too. But all in all, this one is fun. It has some potential. It definitely needs its. Um, armor tuned. I don't think that I've got this right 
aiming even close um, to where I'd like it to be. But I think as a melee, in-your-face kind of performer, a um, little squishy. And the DPS is a little soft. But quite playable. And then to summarize back on the Druid, um, yeah, it does add a lot of ally healing skills, super skills to the Druid, to the Ranger. But even in, when we tried out Celestial Form, um, which gives you some DPS as well as healing, it definitely seems to be much stronger on the healing and didn't really give us a lot of DPS advantage. So we kept having to switch weapons and switched out to the longbow and in two shots whatever we were playing with was gone. So on the other hand, playing with those same bugs, this girl who's supposed to be your in-the-face melee DPS specialist is having a lot of trouble downing things that the ranger plus pet could take down in like two or three shots on the bow. So my feeling is if you're playing rogue assassin kind of engineer with a hammer and no plate armor, you better have a lot better roguelike, thief-like DPS than this one has. So Engineer still needs more DPS. It's still spotty, weird, and quite bizarre, and a lot too much key stroking um, for how hard these guys hit. You don't get a lot of time to stroke 14 keys to get the effect. So that's the way I would look at it. Anyway, um, that's beta weekend three. Um, it's uh, been f a fun couple of specs. I would have liked to have played Revenant again to see if the bugs from last weekend were fixed and it would have played back like first weekend did when we had all the stances and the Dwarven stance. But I'm assuming all that will be fixed anyway by the 23rd when it goes live, so I'll play it then. Anyway, Wow Solo signing off and uh, see you next video and we'll see you on October 23rd for Heart of Thorns going live. Have fun!